Hey everyone, in this video, I want to look at the new internet fallback option for private DNS zones when they integrate with private link. Now, if we think about what does private endpoints give us? So I can think that ordinarily, I have some service. This could be a Microsoft PaaS service. This could be something sitting behind private link service that is my own. But I have this particular instance of a service. So I'm going to call this a storage account 10. Now, ordinarily, these services have a public endpoint that I can use to communicate with them. Now, I can still use firewall capabilities on that to restrict it to certain IPs. I could use service endpoints to restrict it to certain subnets. I have authorization as part of it, authentication, but it's still a public endpoint. And there are many scenarios where we just don't want to use that. And so what we can enable, if we think about our virtual network, we have a certain subnet within that virtual network, and we're gonna create a private endpoint. So it's just an IP address from that subnet that communicates to a specific instance of a service. So in this case, this private endpoint talks to storage account 10. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could then completely just disable the use of that public endpoint. That would really be up to me if I wanted to do that or not. But remember, there's an important point. When we talk to pretty much every service today, we want it to have an encrypted communication. So an encrypted communication requires us to have certificates and it requires us to be talking to a certain DNS name that matches. I expect the name I'm talking to to match the name on the certificate. So ordinarily, I could think, okay, well, my storage account 10, it's got a name of storage account 10.blob.core.windows.net. And that would resolve to the public IP address. When I enable a private endpoint and I enable private link, what it does is it creates another alias and it inserts private link in the name of that. So what I would now get is the idea of storage account 10 dot private link dot blob dot core, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the common ways we handle this new name is we can use Azure private DNS zones and private endpoints can integrate directly in because this private endpoint, it has a specific IP address from that subnet. It's just like a regular NIC in terms of IP addressing. So what can happen is, hey, when I go and create the private endpoint, I can integrate with private DNS. So private link.blob.core.windows.net becomes a private DNS zone. It would have the record, so there would be a record in here for storage account 10, which would then be .private link.blob.core.windows.net. And then I link that instance of the private DNS zone to my virtual network. So now any resource that's in this virtual network when it talks to Azure DNS and it asks for, hey, who is storage account 10.blob.core.windows.net, it will go and see there's an alias for storage account 10.private link.blob.core.windows.net, which can now resolve because of this link. And so it would actually go ahead and resolve. Fantastically, I'm good to go. We can see this. So if we super quickly jump over for a second, so let's go and look at the portal. So in here, I have this storage account 10. You can see I've created a private endpoint. If we look at the private endpoint, we can see that it has been linked and created in the infra subnet of this particular virtual network. And then additionally, you have a DNS configuration. And what I've done is we can see if we look at the private DNS zones, I have a private link.blob.core.windows.net. If we look at the record set, we can see sure enough, there's a record exactly for that that resolves to the IP address 
from within that infra subnet. And then you link this particular instance of the private DNS zone to my virtual network. So now I'm inside a virtual machine that's on that same virtual network. And if I do an NS lookup, well, we can see it knows about the fact that there is this alias available that is the private link.blob.core.windows.net and it resolves to that private IP address instead of the public endpoint. So, so far, this looks fantastic and we are super happy. Now let's consider there's another storage account. So now we're going to say there's storage account two. It too has a public endpoint that has not been enabled, sorry, disabled. For this scenario, yes, they're going to have a private endpoint, but they're still okay with things talking to the public endpoint as well. Now, it just so happens there's a completely different virtual network. There's a completely different private endpoint that talks to that one. And because of that, that means also for the DNS name of storage account two, there is also a private link version of the name. However, it's a larger company, and this is very common. They created another private DNS zone, but it's a different instance. It's got the same name, but it's a completely different instance of this zone that is then linked to their particular virtual network. And this different instance of the private link.blob.core.windows.net has the record for storage account two that resolves to this private IP address. And remember, these VNets may not be peered. This can't get to that private IP anyway. So I maybe wouldn't even want it to be able to resolve to the private IP. I want to just go and use the public endpoint. But the problem is, when I'm a resource inside this virtual network and I do an NS lookup for storage account two.blob.core.windows.net, it's still going to tell me that, oh, there's a private link version of this name. So then I'm going to go and query the private link zone because it's mapped, but it doesn't have this record in it. It's in a different instance. So it's going to give me an NX domain, a non existent domain response saying, I can't resolve it, I give up. So now I'm stuck, I cannot get to the resource. And if we look at this quickly, so if we go and jump back over, we can see this in action. I have another storage account with exactly that configuration and it, it's failing. It's not giving me any IP address. And the reason for that, if we go and look, so that storage account two, absolutely has its own private endpoint and it's in a different virtual network. It's in a completely different virtual network. It's in a different private DNS zone instance of private link.blob.windows.net, so I can't get to it. So I'm now in a bit of a, mm, well, this is not a great situation for me. So what I can now do is I can configure a resolution policy on the link of my particular private DNS zone instance link into my virtual network. And what I can now say is, hey, as part of this, I'm going to have this resolution policy. And I'm going to tell it that I want to do an NX domain redirect. So instead of just saying, I don't have it, it doesn't exist. I'm going to now go and look up the public. So I'm going to call the public Azure DNS resolver and do the internet DNS recursion to see if I can resolve the non private link version of the name. So I enable this on the specific link. And with this, what it should now do is it would firstly try and find storage account two in my instance. It won't find it. But instead of that NX domain response, it will go and use the internet recursion to see if it can go and find the public IP. So let's go and see if we can do that. So we'll go back and 
we'll look at our link of our private link.blob.core.windows.net instance. And we'll edit it. And notice we have this fallback to internet. So I'm going to now enable fallback to internet. We'll save it. And I need to wait for it to finish. So it's going to take maybe 10 to 15 seconds for that to complete. But once this completes, then we'll just try and run that NS lookup again. So that has now completed. We can see the link has now got fallback to internet enabled. So if I jump back over to that virtual machine and try the same NS lookup again, happy, happy days. It knows that yes, there is still this idea of there's a private link version of it, but because I have that fallback to internet in the case of an NX domain, it now resolves it to the public IP address of the public endpoint. And I would now be able to go and get access to it. And we would now be happy and all things are right in the world. And that's it. I mean, that's all I wanted to cover in this video, but this can be a huge pain point for many organizations because they do end up with many different virtual networks. They're all using private endpoints to the same services. They all have their own instances of the private link.blob.core or the database or data lakes or you name it. They're all going to end up with these particular private DNS zone instances and they're all separate. And so if there's an instance of, I do now have some resource that is behind a private endpoint, and I want it though to still be able to use the public endpoint for other networks, now when I turn on this NX domain redirect, it will make that happen. I hope that was useful. Till next video, take care.